Hello everybody, welcome back. This is the Clay Golem. We're back in Foundry VTT. We are on the cusp of getting ready to actually play and I'm hoping to be able to do that sort of like within the next couple of days. Um, get some players in, etc. A few things we need to do. Um, I think what we're going to do is actually start a, a new playlist for actual Foundry uh, examples. When we've actually got players involved, we're actually running adventures. And I kind of have visions of being able to kind of... Um, you know record ongoing sessions so you guys can see how it's working in the real world a bit more entertainment rather than the sort of like the learning side um so the playlist of setting up stormwreck isle is probably the last one in that particular playlist uh, i think when we go beyond that we're going to end up with a new playlist for developing further adventures and things but we pretty much know what we're doing with all of that now um they still will. We still will look at some add-ons and stuff as we go along. As we get some more complex adventures, we might need things like different levels within uh, within maps and stuff. And we've definitely got some add-ons to look at for that stuff. Uh, so this is by no means the end at all. Just the end of the original Stormwreck Isle creation series. So what we want to do in this video is get ourselves ready for our actual players. And at the moment, we don't have any players actually connected to our game. So we're going to look at how we do that um, because this is all very well. No players. It's what's the point. <laughs> so first of all, um, I've got my actors here. Now with my players, I'm going to be having a essentially a session zero with them to talk about what they want to do with regard to their characters for running this. Now it's only going to be a bit of a test adventure. It's a relatively short adventure this one. Um, and it's mostly going to be about introducing them to Foundry um, and working out anything that we haven't done correctly or that is still broken once players are actually trying to use it because as much as much work as we can do think we've got it right it's not until we stress test it with real people that we find out that something doesn't quite work we need to tweak it i don't know there's something wrong with vision etc so lots of little bits like that that we may need to do and they're very helpfully going to do that for me but first of all we need to actually we actually need to have players okay so i'm going to go to my um game settings at the top right here uh, and I need to go to my user management button. So if I click this, this is going to bring up everybody who is able to log into this game. Obviously, there's the Game Master. I created Fictional Bob, um, which we used for a couple of demos uh, a few videos back. But I need to update this to my actual players. So I'm going to put Bella in there. And I'm going to add Dixon in here too. And I'm going to create... I've only got two players for the test thing. Um because you know need to keep it fairly simple um, but also I'm going to create uh, one for myself so that I can go through and just check the ba real basics um, second half of this video just to make sure that works too so I'm going to save that now I could put passwords in for everybody I'm not going to do that these uh, these players are trusted friends of mine have been for a very very long time um, so uh, I don't need to worry about that. They're not going to log in as each other. And in fairness, they are actually in punching range of each other. <laughs> they start me messing around with each other's stuff. Uh, so that's all good. Right, just get rid of those. Okay, so we have created those. Now the bottom left here where we've got players, if I click this little up arrow, we can see it is now saying we've got the game master who's logged in. We've got this little purple dot. Uh, we've got Bella who currently is in control of Randall. Now that's because when I created Bob the player, I assigned Randall to them. So I haven't created Bella as a new player. All I've done is rename Bob. Um, Dixon, no character. And Go uh, Golan plays, again, no character assigned there. I don't want Bella to have Randall. If I go to my actors and open my players tab, uh, if I right click on Randall and go to configure ownership, just bring this into the middle so you can see a bit better. Um, we can see that all players says none. Did I just open Randall? I did. Uh, all players it says none and the default should be none. So in theory, Bella shouldn't have access to Randall. Oh, okay. I wasn't expecting... <laughs> Again, this is what happens when you mess around and take things off. Uh, put things on, take things off. So with all of these, all of their ownership shouldn't be limited. It should be default with all players none because I don't want any of my players to be able to access and move around these other characters because that's not who their character is. I just did random looking at it again now. 
Uh, yeah, definitely says none. Uh, and ownership, that one's all right. And sorry, man. Now, the reason I'm checking these is because we did, when we were looking at defreds, we did mess around with the targeting and went, oh, hang on a minute, if we can have observer or limited access to other tokens does that mean we can select them to apply those and we did a bit of playing around as it turns out totally unnecessary because the solution was to update dfreds to target tokens not um you know to, sorry to target targets not selected tokens um but we moved beyond that anyway but we got some of this legacy stuff from when we were playing gabbling again aren't i okay so I'm going to, for Golem Plays, I am going to assign a character and then of course I'm going to assign Haley. So here, by default, players do have no access to these characters. So Bella's going to have the default of none, Dixon's going to have the default of none, but Golem Plays is going to have ownership. So save that. That means Golem Plays, when they log in, can play um, uh, can play Haley. Okay, so that's good. So we've set up our players. Um, I've assigned one character to it. Now I do need to have that session zero to have that conversation with my players about uh, what characters they want to play. They may pick some of the default characters that come with the module and just say, let's just crack on and get going. They may want to make their own. Whichever way they do that, I'm going to use DDB Importer to pull their new player characters in. Uh, into the scene, into um, into this uh, into this game, uh, and obviously I'm going to update the group. We've currently got Haley's Heroes, which is not appropriate at all for them. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of that group and uh, and recreate a group for their players. Now the question is, this module is designed for four first level players, um, so I'm going to give them a choice. They can either play one character each that will make second level just to keep it relatively even or they can play two characters each which might be useful to see how that works um, in which case they will have two first level characters there go ergo two players we've got our four first level characters that might be useful because we'll get a wider mix of skills and things to see kind of in action um, but I'm not going to force them down that line I'm going to ask them what their preference is Okie dokie. Right, what else do I need to do here? I don't think I need to do anything else here at the moment. Um, what I do need to do is talk to you about how players actually connect to the game. Um, so I don't need to go to configure settings. I've done user management. That's all good. But if I keep coming down here, I get to invitation links. Now I'm going to click on that. And it's going to open this little box in the middle here you'll see there are two different links here local network which has an IP address um, and then an internet one which is all dotted out okay so the way this works is players in case you've never done this you might not have done this if you're new like me you've not actually done this in the real world uh, and you're getting carried away and all excited and then you can <laughs> It's like, how do I actually use this thing in the real world? So forgive me if I'm patronizing you, and you probably know more, most of you probably know more than I do, but I'll go through it anyway. Uh, so any computers that are on my network, that is, they're connected to the same Wi-Fi as I am, um, they're plugged into my network at home, etc. cetera, uh, they can all connect to my game using that local network link. So they're gonna open their web browser, whatever web browser it is that they use, um, and they are literally going to, if I click on this, you can see at the top it pops up and says game invitation link copy to clipboard. So I can post that in chat, I can read it out to them, I can text it to them, whatever I want to do. And they're just going to put that into their browser and that is going to connect them to the game. And we're going to see that in a minute. And I'm going to do that. Um, but what if they're not on your local network? What if they're the other end of the country in a different country, even next door, but on they're on a different Wi-Fi? Uh, that's not going to work. They're going to have to use this one. Again, if I click on it, it tells me it's copied. But you can't see what that is, and that's for very good reason. So I'm going to talk for a moment about this internet connection. Uh, what we don't want to do is have a wide open internet connection to the world that anybody can use to access your computer when you're running Foundry, um, just for security. Literally, just purely for security. You don't want people hacking into your system, stealing all your stuff, deleting it, you know, 
downloading personal data and all of that stuff. So we really, 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 really don't want to do that. So what we can do is just send this link and it's why it's hidden. Okay, and I'm not going to show you guys, obviously, for exactly those reasons. Um, but I can send them that link that is a, it's just a network, it's just an internet um, network address, so an IP address that says not only how to find my house, my router, but then also how to find my specific machine on that network and access Foundry. So they're not accessing the whole of my computer, they're only accessing Foundry two things that need to be done in order to make that work. First of all, you need to have your machine set with a static IP address. Now, don't want to get too technical, um, partly because I don't understand it and partly you don't need to know the really technical bits. Um, is the router in your house, more than likely, um, every time you turn your machine on, it chooses an IP address, an internal IP address to give it. So today, you know, I turn my computer on and my router says, oh, you're going to be machine number 378 today. Um, I restart my machine and my computer talks to the router and says, hey, give me an address. It says, oh, now you're 27. So it changes. It's called a dynamic IP address. Uh, and that's internal. So if I get somebody external and say, connect to my computer, when it gets to my router and it says, hey, I'm looking for that computer, the router says, oh, no. And number 27 doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. It's like, so whoever it is you're looking for, they're not there anymore. And obviously that's a good security thing. Um, but I do want my players to be able to find me. So I need to set up what's called a static IP. What that means is my router assigns me the same number every time rather than keep changing it for me. Is that a big security risk? No, it's not really not. Um, you know, it's... Could be, but it's not. Um, not really. Nothing to worry about, not unless you're doing nefarious stuff. Um, somebody in the comments is probably going to tell me that's incorrect. But anyway, that's the way we need to do it. So I need to have my computer findable on the same address every single time. So there are instructions out there. You can search for Foundry, um, connecting players, do some Google searches. Um, I follow those instructions. It is technical. But actually, some of the instructions out there are really nice and clear step by step to the point where, because I don't understand it well enough, I'm not going to show you how to do that. Um, but somebody else will uh, and has, and I've managed to follow it. And if I can follow it, you guys can follow it. All right? It's not that, not that challenging. <laughs> Muppets can do it. You can. Um, so what I've had to do is, yeah, create that static IP address so it doesn't keep changing, so that when players try to connect, they're always able to find my computer. And you also need to set up a thing called port forwarding. And that's what this on the local one, that's what this colon 30,000 is. What that's saying is you're looking for, this for the machine at this address on the local network, and you're connecting to that machine using a particular port, this one's called 30,000. And at the end of that port, you should find the Foundry server running and that to connect to. So without that port information, it's going to just try to connect to your, your machine. Um, and your machine's going to go, what the hell do you want? You know, I don't understand which bit of me you're trying to talk to. So it won't allow you to do that. So two things. Static IP, so it can find your machine no matter what. And the port forwarding, so it knows that it's talking to Foundry. So two things you need to set up. And again, instructions out there, quite easy to do. And it will give you whatever this hidden number is here. Um, again, not going to click that eye, not going to show you. But I can send that to my players. Um, it does create a non-secured link. That is, um, it, it's not a secure connection. So you have to trust your players aren't going to hack your machine. Um, and they have to trust that you're not going to send them anything malicious using it. Um, you know, but these are going to be people you know. Um, or at least they know that you're going to be setting up Foundry to play with them. So that shouldn't be a big issue. There are better ways of doing it, but that's generally having your own host server. So either renting a server or having one set up um, and using secure socket layer um, certification. That gets really complex. That's beyond the realm of my capability and my interest, to be fair. 
uh, I don't want to start going into oh and if you pay out this money and if you pay out this and if you pay out that um, because we've already bought foundry I don't want to be spending loads of money on all these extras um, it's not helpful to you and say hey look guys look at my perfect setup this is how you should have foundry and it's only going to cost you x amount <laughs> Of, of money that's that's not that's not the way i do things it's not the way i want to go uh, i want to keep everything as cheap and as free as possible things like using jb2a the uh, our effects we're not using the patron version because i can't expect you guys to be able to afford to do that and to be honest do we need to no we don't we don't need it it's a nice add-on i might do it later on at some point um just to show that off and see what's in there but we don't need that i'm gabbling again aren't i right so look those up if you need to do that um, I'm going to be using the local network address because I'm literally going to be joining from uh, another browser. So uh, I'm going to do that right now. In my other window that you can't see, I have just uh, opened up, as it turns out, Microsoft Edge. Uh, and I have literally pasted that in there. And I'm now going to bring that across so that you can see. Da, 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 da. Right. So as you can see right at the very top here, this is just in Edge not in anything special um, I have pasted in that link for my local server because obviously I'm on the same computer so it's the same network uh, and just putting that in it automatically brings me straight to not just a foundry but to this game Stormwreck Isle it, so that link is specific to whatever game I'm running at the moment because effectively my computer under here is running the server okay so it's connected to this server it knew exactly what to find on this machine because of that port uh, and note it does say this is not secure because it's not an https connection so it's not a secure connection my computer has the ability to uh, <laughs> hack itself because <laughs> uh, it's not a secure connection between my computer and my computer so just be aware if your players have trouble connecting it might be because even though they'll be using the other link, because it's not a secure HTTPS connection, their computer might grumble about, hang on a minute, this is dangerous, they can't connect. So they have to trust that you're not going to do anything horrible to them. Okay, so as a player, here I am. Uh, and as you can see, it's asking me to join a game session. I can use my drop down here, and I can see all of the available players to log in as. I can't log in as the Game Master because I'm connecting as a player and that's a Game Master account even though it's already logged in. I've got Bella, I've got Dixon and I've got Golem Plays. Now I'm going to, obviously I'm going to choose Golem Plays. You can have passwords on here. So this will stop players logging in as each other. It stops anybody who potentially does use a link and access your game from being able to log in and do stuff. So definitely get your players to use passwords and things like that i really do recommend it uh, i haven't at the moment because i can't be bothered to keep stopping to type the password in while i'm trying to do videos <laughs> do as i say not as i do all right <laughs> keep yourself safe okay so golden play is going to join game session da, 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 da. so again remember this is the player view First of all, simple calendar pops up because I haven't got the settings to say don't pop up automatically. I'm just going to close that. Right, what is it showing us? Let's start off with the uh, the bit in the middle. This big little box. Big little box. Brilliantly done. So as you can see, because we don't already have a character assigned, it's bringing this up and it says use a configuration for Golem Plays. I can choose to upload a picture for my avatar if I want. I'm not going to bother because I don't really need to use that. Uh, I can adjust my player color if I want. Again, I really don't care. Uh, pronouns if I want to. Um, but I can select the character I want to play. Now, as the DM, I only assigned Haley as owner for this player. I could have assigned several different characters. So now I would be getting the choice and going, oh, which one's which ones plural do I want or I can pick from one of these four um, but I only assigned one so it's perfectly plausible I wouldn't do this but it's plausible you can go I've got four players I've got four characters when you log in 
just grab whichever character you want and we'll see randomly what you get because you don't can't see anything other than their name you could do that if you wanted to um but you might have players with characters they're not happy with anyway right so i've made sure i've selected Haley, and i can save configuration that means golem plays now has Haley as a character next thing we want to look at bottom left all the way down here we can see we've got this little pop-up here that tells us who's logged in the game master is logged in we know that because it's on the screen behind and golem plays is logged in and sorry sorry hovering over it and you can see in square brackets the name of the character that they are controlling brilliant so they've got Haley. good right what next ah oh, let's have a look at the chat box over here dice so nice automatically brings up this box to say hey you've just logged in do you want to set up your 3d dice and we can click in here oh it's used our default colors which is lovely um but we can also kind of go actually i want to um you know i want to choose specific types of dice this is per player okay so it doesn't matter what they choose as as their player it's not going to affect anybody else okay so they can just go oh yeah they can have a play with that as much as they want maybe while they're waiting for other people yeah i'm happy with those what are they amethyst type of color aren't they that purpley kind of pinkish okay so they can do that um they can't see anything on screen at the moment i'm going to come back to that in a moment about why um they cannot there is no automatically delete the whole chat log thing the gm can do that the players can't they can delete individual items if they want to under combat tracker nothing because there's no combat under actors they've got a players folder they can only see ones that we've given them oversight of so either limited observer or owner and i've only given this player ownership over one character which is Haley. that means that this isn't all cluttered that means it's really simple for them to open their own character sheet okay really really easy for them to see it which which is great that's what we want um this my character sheet is slightly misaligned because uh, one of my settings isn't quite where I need them to be but that's okay so they can open their character sheet uh, they can see their inventory they can do all of those exciting things cast their spells uh, as we know that they can create their own favorites or cure wounds drop it in there they can do that they can also if they wish to drag any of these things like the mace onto their macro bar at the bottom here okay so things that they know they're going to be using a lot they can't be bothered to open their character sheet every time they can drop them down there absolutely fine yeah great Woo go for it if that's what you want to do that's what you want to do uh, they can also do a short rest by clicking this knife and fork icon they can do a long rest by clicking this camping icon uh, and there's special traits uh, which actually i wouldn't want them having access to do that no, there's no reason why they would uh, i trust my players that's not a problem um but it looks like they can turn them on and off so they can access their character okay back to the top here we've got items there are there's no items now when we look on the as a gm we've got all the spells and all sorts of things like that but they are not shared with the players okay they haven't been given oversight of them but i can do that journal items no they can't go and read all our journal items about all the different adventures <laughs> they can't see them but i can share specific things so if you remember in stormwreck isle when they go to the shipwreck they can find the captain's journal um, and we kind of created that as a separate journal item when they find that i can just right click change ownership and it will appear here for them uh, let me show you what i mean he said hoping this works so i'm going to go to my journals i'm going to use stormwreck isle and i'm going to find here it is the captain's journal so this one here if i right click configure ownership all players have none i could change that to observer and then i'm really hoping when i bring this back over yeah look they've got a folder now and now the player can read that journal okay oh look it even tells them what the xp award is so i can do that now i need to make sure i remove that again because <laughs> i can get rid of that as well uh because i don't want them reading that journal straight off <laughs> so just be a little bit careful uh, and now i've changed that and removed that ownership oh look can't see it again perfect that's what we want 
So I can share journal entries for them to be able to read it as and when, and certainly if they visit a town and they get to know shops and stuff, um, and places and people, I can add them on. Um, different lore they might learn and stuff like that. No rollable tables, no card stacks, playlists. Um, this is just their controls over volume. Uh, compendium packs, yes, they can access this so they can look these things up. Uh, it's very unlikely that they would need to most of the time. And of course, they've got settings. So what I really like is there's very little clutter for the player. Or well, The DM's got all the clutter. The player's got very, very little. Okay, let's have a look at the configure settings. Um, and again, notice there's no connection links here. There's no configuring users or anything like that. Because again, we don't want the players doing that. Uh, the same as, actually, slight segue, all the way over to the left. Look at the options that they've got the top left here. They haven't got access to Dfred's effects to be able to apply them. They haven't got the walls and, and all of those, the lighting and stuff. They haven't got those, which is good. Obviously, we don't want them to have it. Okay, sorry, segue. All the way back over to the right again. So, okay, so what we want to do is we want to go to configure settings and see what the players can configure their end. Just make this a bit bigger. Um, so let's just go with core. They've got their audio visual communication. Now this is all to do with if you're using the built in voice and cameras for Foundry. Um, now, when I was talking about connections and creating, um, uh, creating that non secure connection for them using the port forwarding um, and the static IP. There's another layer of complexity on that about having an SSL, a secure socket um, layer certification, which basically says, actually, this is a secure server. And so it's got it here about using SSL certificates. Um, so you need to get your server registered as a secure server Therefore, you can use the um, the communication stuff. Now, to be perfectly honest, that's a massive pain in the backside to do. If you're hosting from home like I am, that's a, oh, it's a nightmare. I looked at it and I thought, if I can get it to work, I can help you guys. Um, and I gave up. I just, I didn't have time. I didn't have the patience and I'd rather be making videos that are useful than, than spending ages doing something like that. So for mine, we're doing all of our comms either through uh, Google Meets or um, or through uh, <laughs> Discord, that's the one, or through Discord, uh, that's going to give us our audio visual. We do not need to use this. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, if you were hiring a server uh, to run your games from, they are already going to have that certification stuff in place. And it's definitely one of the advantages of hiring a server is all that will be in place and you can just use the built-in comms and things like that if you want to. But anyway, slight segue. Um, that's where you do your audio settings for that. Uh, they've got their combat tracker, tracker configuration here. They can only pretty much change if they want that combat music, etc. Um, how they want that, um, but nothing else. They've got things like the chat bubbles and things. There's a few bits on here. I want to change this font size back to where it should be on five. I know it uh, makes this writing really small on screen for you guys, but it does kind of slightly mess up the, um, I think six might be about what we can get away with. Uh, token vision animation, light source animation, etc. So that's about animations that they can put on or not. Um, under the fifth edition rules, they've got hardly anything. So again, the DM needs to be setting these rules and stuff that the players need to abide by. But they can disable some animations and things. Same as auto animations. If they wanted, they can turn those off. Combat carousel, they can change the size of that. Um, and just do any of those if they want to. Pretty much nothing they can do in here. Prioritize targets on defreds. That's already set, interestingly enough, which is good. Dice so nice. They can come in here if they decided they hate the dice that they chose. <laughs> they can come in and change them whenever they like. Drag ruler. Um, again, they don't need to change hardly anything in any of this at all. Um, they're not. Re they're not. Haven't got access to GM screen, so I don't know why that's even on there. But you can see that the options they've got. Look at mid look at MIDI QOL. They've got nothing compared to what the DM's got, and that's correct. We are setting the rules that the players will abide by. Um, they might want, you know, target confirmation um, on or not, but we've got it set on our end anyway. Um, 
Again, it's mostly about whether they are turning on or off um, some of the additional animations and stuff that might impact their ability, you know, their machine if they're on a rubbish old laptop or something like that. But really, there's not a lot for them to, to need to do here. Okay, so they can come in and make a couple of changes, but actually, configuration's really, really straightforward. All right, so they're ready to go, except they can't see anything. Why can't they see anything? We need to um, we need to have a look at this. So they should be. Let's just double check here. I'm on. Open this up. I'm on the beach encounter. But the reason they can't see anything is I haven't put Haley's token on. So remember, everything's based kind of on this. <laughs> It's based on vision, <laughs> so we need to uh, we need to drag a token out. And if I drop Haley in now, and now pull back this one, ignore the complaint about the size. There we go. Haley can now see. Just a word of warning, because we're not using a secure connection. If your players connect and you drop their token on, and they say, "But I can't see anything," they can see their HUD but they can't see their token on here, there's a few things that could be wrong. One, your scene actually doesn't have global illumination or your lights aren't switched on. So just check your lighting is correct. The second thing is check your token vision. So if I, can I do it? I can't do it from Haley. Let's move over here. Right click here. So I need to check to make sure we've got vision enabled because if the map says the map configuration says use token vision and the token doesn't have vision, they'll never see anything. So check those. Um, that's the first two things to check. The next thing to check is it could be that their browser is blocking it because it's not on a secure, uh, because it's not a secure website. Um, so they may need to go, uh, this happens, they may need to go to their settings here um, and change something. Now, the easiest for them thing to look at is look, Tracking prevention strict. Um, we may need to do something like exceptions. If we go to exceptions, we can just chuck this in as the site. So that link we use to connect to the game, and we could check that um, as, you know, don't worry about that, it's okay. Um, and there could be a couple of other places where we might need to do that as well. Um, and we just need to change permissions in the security settings. Now I'm not going to go through and show you how to do security settings. I'm afraid I don't. I'm not that au fait with them. Um, but please be aware, it's probably their browser settings that are giving them a bit of grief because it's not a secure um, connection. And that's a good thing that it's giving them grief. It's just now then you need to work out how to turn that off. And the easiest way is to say, hey, look, yes, apply all of your security rules except for this one link. That port forwarding directly to my game, that's okay. Um, and there we go. Why do I know that? Because I'm sitting here on the same machine and it wouldn't do it for me. And I was, I'd already recorded this video once and I got to this point and I was scratching my head going, what the heck is going on? Why can't I see anything? Uh, so I had to go and debug that one myself. Um, thankfully, Google is your friend. And it was like, oh, right, it's the browser that's the issue. Uh, and although it would show all of my menus and everything, it wouldn't show the actual scene. It was struggling with this. So this is a game, this is a player of we're not paused, so the player can move themselves around. We've got the the, uh, the rulers on, which is great. Um, we can do all that, and you can hear my lovely watery sounds in here. Note that on the actual map, we've got some hidden zombies here. Player can't see them, which is great. I've got global illumination on here, which is which is good. Okay, last couple of things I want to do for this video is I want to test that combat stuff from the player's point of view. So I am going to, again, we're, we're back in the DM view. I know I'm flicking between the two. Let me chuck that goblin out right there. Okay, so thrown that goblin out and Haley hopefully should now, I just wanna make this a little bit bigger. It's a bit awkward trying to tr show you two screens at once. Um, but look, Haley can now see that. Uh, why are they in different positions? That's slightly bizarre, isn't it? It's because I'm flicking between the two. It's just getting confused. 
All right, so Haley's going to go into combat, but Haley cannot initiate combat. Um, oh, she can. She can put herself in combat, but of course the GM needs to put the goblin in combat. So I'm going to see if I can't um, try and jiggle this a little bit and, and, and show you this. I know it's going to be a bit awkward with the two screens. Uh, sorry about that. But rather than keep switching, I'm going to get the DM to roll initiative for both of them. Um, I've got my combat carousel up uh, we can see that we've got our initiative both of them are rubbish and Haley is going to go first so I'm going to click my begin combat okay and it's Haley's go so let's bring Haley over so this is the player experience here um, I can open my character sheet in fact as a player I'm going to keep that character sheet open in combat but I can move my map around and things whenever I want and I want my chat open right oh, I'm going to target that goblin and I'm going to smack him with my mace right this is what how I want the player experience it is asking me to click attack it's asking me to click damage it's not automatically doing those like it is for the DM so I'm going to attack do I want advantage disadvantage or normal it's a normal roll I can make my roll it's a six okay got my little animation as a player I saw that um, doesn't tell me whether that hit or not does it so do I roll my damage or don't I well obviously the DM on their screen can see that that was not a hit so straight away the DM hasn't got to open character sheets hasn't got to look anything up can immediately say I can see who's targeted look Haley's that's Haley's color Haley's targeted that one and I can see it didn't hit so I can tell the player straight away whether that hit or not um, you know however I might want to describe that okay Haley so it's the end of your turn I think is there anything else you'd like to do um, because you've got a bonus action uh, what can we do as a bonus action potentially uh, anything we'd want to do or oh, I might cast shield of faith on myself okay because it's a bonus action let's do that so again this is Haley doing this not the DM oh, worked beautifully didn't it okay it's applied my bonus action you've used your bonus action it's applied my shield of faith it has applied concentration I've got a nice little glowing aura around myself and if I pop back to my front page my armor class has increased to 20 which is what I would expect okay and it gives you the little breakdown there brilliant uh, now Haley can just click on her main character to move off her turn now I suspect yes good Haley's locked she can't move her token and stuff because it's not her turn that's another thing I wanted to check was correct okay Whoop. goblins go well it's obviously going to target Haley I'm going to open my I'm going to open my gobbo over here um, and it's going to be a straight scimitar attack here roll 17 um, <clears throat> and there goes everything blimey everything happened didn't it everything happened there so in our log what happened um, so the game master uh, the game master rolled a scimitar roll sorry up here so up at the top here scimitar attack it auto rolled a d20 we can see it rolled a 17 it's got that plus four plus uh, plus two plus two uh, does that hit Haley? yes it does hit her armor class of 20 it does five damage um, that was applied to Haley. you can see she's taken damage here her bar's gone down it then asked her to do a concentration check so she did a saving throw now one thing is it automatically made her do that saving throw it didn't ask her it just did that you might want that setting that prompts the player to do that rather than that automatically doing concentration saving throws I think that's an oversight on myself I think I would want the player to have that in their control that like oh blimey but anyway she failed it so it removed her concentration which removed her shield of faith so that has worked exactly how we would like it to work okay I'm going to move um, I'm going to move on from the goblins turn back to Haley's turn her bonus actions has reset now 
and let's bring Haley back over here. So let's look at that chat log for Haley through all of that. So scrolling back up here, she did a shield of faith, blah, 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 blah. Here, the goblin attacked. It rolled a 21. It did five points of damage. It then said about her concentration. It gave her a saving throw. Uh, it showed that she, she failed it. It was only a DC 10, but she failed it. Then it said that it removed her concentration. It removed her shield of faith. Uh, and then when it, it got back to her turn, it removed her bonus action. So, or rather, it gave her back her bonus action. So this is where some of those, um, uh, some of those, uh, you know, how many cards do we have? Do we collapse them and things like that? Because there's quite a lot happened in there. That one goblin's turn, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight things happened. Uh, we've got eight messages there. So that might be a bit kind of like blimey, a bit in your face. Um, might want to consolidate that. But uh, without spending ages and going through more combat for you, from a player's point of view, I think that's a really good experience of them being able to do their own attacks, being able to do their own damage. Um, yes, they didn't do the concentration saving throw themselves. So that's entirely up to you whether you want that. But I think all the other saving throws, it prompts them. I think it's only the concentration one where I didn't set that. So as far as I'm concerned, I think this is ready to go. All I need is for my players to make their decision about what characters they're going to want. Make sure I've imported them and assigned them to them. Then get them to connect. Check to make sure they can see stuff. Okay, so when they come in, they're going to have blank as well until I pull in their tokens onto a scene. And while I want to start them off looking at... If I get... Player can't see it, can they? <laughs> I'm in the wrong one. Um, while I want to start them off, and I'm going to give them their introduction... Um, I've got to end the combat. End the combat. Thank you. Yes. Uh, while I actually want to start them off with... Uh, hello? Why can't I? That's journals, you muppet. That's why. Sorry. I wonder why. <laughs> while I actually activate the scene. Correct. While I want to start them off with here, and I'm going to give them my introduction description here from, you know... What, what the heck they're doing here and stuff um, I don't need because this has got global illumination it's not got token vision I don't need them to have a token on to see this one but as soon as they move to the beach they need a token on it so I'll have to remember to drop their tokens on um, <coughs> and yeah and then we're off and flying and I think that will be uh, be really good to just run through so keep an eye out for that um, hopefully that will be coming fairly soon in the next few days at least um, a little introductory get everybody going as long as there's not a disaster if there is a disaster I'll let you know why it was a disaster um, but yeah I want to record it hopefully we'll be able to record their voice as well um, I'm hoping my setup will be able to do that so you can actually hear what the players are saying the questions that they are asking about the foundry stuff as well as running the adventure um, but we'll only do a fairly short session just to kind of kick off to start with Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope that's been kind of useful. It might be the kind of video that maybe your players want to see. Um, I don't know. But your setup will be different from mine, probably. Um, because it's, you know, you <laughs> do whatever you like. Thanks for watching. I'll see you, hopefully, quite soon in the next one for some action. Bye.